Hello and welcome back to episode 2 of Deliver Us Mars. I'm Vic and you're watching yet another Let's Play channel. And, uh... I thought we were going to go for a ride. Do I have to close his door for him? Do I not get to ride inside the truck? Wow. I'm glad you figured out how to sit properly on the bench. Why won't you look at me, huh? Are we still doing drinks after this? Claire almost choked me to death last week for giving beer. What? Listen, your sister might not be big, but when it's something that concerns you, that woman can kill a lion with her bare hands. So, that's a yes on the drinks. Hello? Hold on. I got a message that I've been asked to go to Maria right away. Apparently for some classified emergency meeting. Maria? That must be really serious. Can I tag along? No. You only have to smuggle me past security, and then once I'm in, I'll just... No. Fine. <laughs> I know that fine. Claire? You going to that meeting at Maria's? That meeting you're not invited to? Yeah. Please, Claire, if you just let me through security, I'll just, you know... I really have to. Perhaps you can stand by her. No, I'll just hear about it later. It's fine. So where are we? I guess we must be in California, right? Or Florida? Which one is Cape Canaveral? Hmm. Keep your head down. It's been restless again lately. Really? What happened to that diplomat of the Golden Tongue of yours? He doesn't seem to work anymore. Things do sound a bit restless in town, don't they? All right, this is your stop. Is it? It is. Just let the grown-ups handle this secret meeting first. Okay, that was uncalled for. Just wanted to make sure you're not still going to try anything dumb to get in. I won't. Hmm. Don't even think about it. Uh-huh. Okay, bye. I guess I'll go up the stairs then. All right, let's go find another way into Maria's office. Naturally. That's called lying. Ayla, let's go. Hey, look, people. Your hair is strange, person. And also, you won't talk to me, so I guess I'll just move on. So we have established that our person is... Uh, oh. The WSA globe, it's almost ironic that they painted it yellow gold as this planet becomes more desertified every day. There's nothing I can do about it. The generations before us already took it all for granted. Well, what color would you have liked to paint it? Perhaps we could have painted it blue, hmm? I guess we're gonna go inside. Everybody's hair looks here weird here. What's up with that? So wait a minute. We we WSA people are are living in this edifice of the world that's gone, while there's a slum town outside, and we are surprised that things get restless outside. Hand sanitizer, look at that. Laptop turned off, classy. Mm. 
I guess I'm just going through open you doors. Say. Yeah, we can cut through here to Maria's. Might can find we? a look around too. Not been here in ages. <laughs> It's like no one has. Why would they? In 2041, the Lunar MPT dish helped diminish the planet's energy crisis by massively increasing energy yields. After the Great Blackout of 2054 and the instigation of Mission Fortuna, Rolf Robertson made his way to the moon base to restart the MPT, giving his life in the process. WSA really is trying their best to help our world with our energy needs. I'm sure we'll get to help the entire population someday. Was I Rolf Robertson last time? I, wow, I, I thought <laughs> I thought I was a woman last time. I told you I didn't do any, any research. Microwave power technology is a revolutionary form of energy absorption and distribution. The Lunar MPT, along with the 42 Earth-based MPT receivers, helped stop the growing energy crisis of the 2030s. MPTs. My jam. I got absolutely fascinated by it when I saw my dad working on it every day. He really saved this planet when he designed this. After the success of Mission Fortuna, Claire Johansson spearheaded Mission Vestia to provide manpower to the lunar MPT and bring Rolf's body back home. Claire and her team discovered WSA software engineer Sarah Baker critically injured in cryosleep. Isaac Johansson, one of the three Lunar Council members and core Atwood instigators, took the last arc and escaped. That's the last time I saw Dad. I'm fine. Just remembering it always feels... I'm fine. I'm still struggling with the chronology here a little bit. Was Isaac still on the moon base when we were there? Rolf's spacesuit from the moon. The journey this outfit has gone through. One can only dream of being part of such a legendary mission. Well, that's what we're going to do. Is there more stuff to see? Yeah, okay, we should do this first. After the Great Blackout catapulted the Earth back into an energy crisis, Claire Johansson, Maria Gonzalez, and Rolf Robertson undertook Mission Fortuna, a manned rocket mission to discover the Blackout's cause. Robertson, under the guise of Johansson and Gonzalez, refueled and reconnected the MPT dish. Claire really had such a big hand in reviving the WSA. Well, there you go. I was definitely Rolf in the last game. And definitely died, apparently. I think that was fairly clear. Devised by the Lunar Council members sometime before the Great Blackout, Project Outward saw the evacuation of nearly all Moonbase residents on board three large spacefaring vessels known as ARCs. The location of the traitorous council members, as well as the rest of the Moonbase crew, remains unknown. My dad designed and built most of the ARCs that they used. Like almost everything else here at the WSA. It was supposed to be an escape plan for the colony if something ever went wrong. Well, uh... Yeah, give that door a try and see if we get lucky. Which door am I giving a try? Ah. Well, worth a try. Oh, hi, Mark. People just don't know anything about security. Hmm. 
Looking good, sis. <laughs> they really need to change these. I like nothing like that anymore. Are you joking? You look so good still. Thanks, I try. You? Trying anything? Yeah, right. I just, I meant that, like, Thanks. you never have to come on, Alex. Try. Are you headed to Maria's office? No, oh, why? Oh, I'm just going the same way, so. Hey, I was just looking at a few of the Mission Fortuna exhibits on my way over here. That's good. How long were you actually stationed on the moon? I was on the space station, mostly. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, that's why I never saw you on the surface, I guess. I saw you. Oh, really? When I did software upgrades for Rose's ASE. Oh, yeah, ACE. No, ASE. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I mean... <laughs> I named it ACE because I didn't get that ASC was an acronym, so I just kept calling it ACE, and Rosa would just start doing that too. It's kind of a confusing name, I guess. <laughs> right. Be more awkward, please. Yours is named Alex, right? Uh, where are you headed to? Wait, wait, you didn't answer my question yet. Uh, question? About how long you were stationed on the moon? You want the years with the forced cry asleep or without? Sorry, I didn't mean to. I really just need to get to the meeting, Kat. I just wanted to apologize for what happened with my dad. I, I know he didn't mean what he did. I think that's why he tried to save you on the moon. Save me? Your dad did not... Kathy, I don't want to be disrespectful, but... What your dad and the Lunar Council did, they... they left us here to rot. They committed the worst crimes imaginable against humankind and our planet. They deserve to be punished for what they've done. Am I interrupting something? No? No. Thanks to an entire backlog of precedents, I know not to be surprised to see you here. Oh, if I made it this far, you might as well just let no. me... No. Maria's gonna be on video, you no. know? No! Okay, I bet you guys rehearsed that. We totally did. Why not work? I like being a rebel. Let's go. Six years. What? On the moon. It was six years. I'm sorry I didn't answer your question earlier. Right. Thanks. Well, I guess they learned something about security. So, are you are you actually going to stow away on the mission to Mars? Is that well, the vibe that I'm picking up? That display doesn't look right. Find a way to listen in on the meeting. Oh, good. Oh yeah, misuse your your laser just cut your way through here. I think I think that would probably be noisy. Okay, we don't need to sprint. Just let the pieces fall where they may. Oh, it looks like maybe my cutter doesn't have ammo this time. That's kind of nice. There's another game that's all about doing this, isn't there? I forget what it's called. Some kind of salvage something. Uh, why would I cut this one? I mean, I'm going to cut it because it's there, but if I can... I 
don't think that's how that's supposed to work. Uh, flashlight. R for flashlight. That makes sense. Do I need do I need a flashlight? How pissed are these gonna pe people going to be that I'm in here destroying their equipment? Do I need to elevate her? Uh, what? Oh, okay. We're, uh... We're parkouring. Am I... Nope. And then up here. And then, and then... What? Well, obviously I want to be over there. Because I need to, I need to zappy that. Really? I'm... I ought to be able to grab onto that ledge, I think. Can I move this guy? No. Yeah, that's great and all, but, um... I need to be on it when it does that. need to get my friend to do it. What's the use my friend button? What's the any of the buttons? <laughs> Where are the controls though? Come on. Uh, yeah, I know that. Oh, what button was that? See? Why are you looking at her butt, you perv robot? Um, what happened to the perv robot controls? I can carry or place... I was so sure that it would just be a matter of, you know, push a button. No? And I can't just... because it's covered. Do I need... is it just a timing thing? Do I have to hit it and then... Well, I missed my window. Good job. Pretty sure I can't make it from over there, so. Come on back. This would be so much easier if my robot could just push a button for me. Yeah, there we go. Alright. Making things too complicated, I guess. Um. Are you kidding me? Girl. Girl. Just... Just grab onto the thing. Why... <sighs> like, I would have thought that was an obvious grab. gotta do a run jump. Okay. Yeah, everybody is just gonna be so happy with me. Stop looking at her butt. We need to start on that conversation, Ava. Not in there. 
It appears signal strength doesn't seem to be too much of a problem anymore. That's kind of nice. Absolutely certain. So it must be them. Yes. We feel that we can safely assume that Project Outward sent this signal directly to us. Intentionally. I... can't believe it. They're on Mars? What? Seemingly have been for the last 13 years. Closer than any of us could have imagined. You okay? Can't imagine this must be easy to hear with everything. I'm fine. I'm fine. I assume we can find a justified mission up for then. Mission Opera? Since we pulled Sarah and Kathy from the moon, we've been formulating a contingency plan, should we discover Outward's location. During Mission Vestia, we found indications that the three ARC vessels Outward used to leave the moon weren't just for transportation. Our information leads us to believe these three ARC actually form a shrine, a completely self-reliant settlement. But why reach out? Why now? Is it a distress signal or an invitation? Doesn't matter. Mission Opera has only one objective. Bring the Arcs and their revolutionary technology back home. We should analyze the distress signal. Maybe we can determine the encryption used. We're working on it as we speak. I can enable terminal access in the back office. See what you make of it. Ada, quick. Find a way inside that room. Well, I guess I'm just going to continue this way, right? As far as I know, the word trine does not imply a uh, self-sufficient colony. So that description was a little misleading. Perfect. Ava, stay right there. What you're about to hear cannot leave this room. Understood? It's not a message for them. start by including Ryan and Sarah as part of the team. Not only do they excel in their respective fields, they're vital to me personally. I trust them both in my life. That leaves one more position to be filled. Yes. Hey. Hi. At the risk of sounding like an idiot, I think we should take Kathy. What? 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 <laughs> she was leagues above the other graduates in our program. You mean, the only class of astronauts that we've had in the past ten years? It doesn't change the fact that she has nearly every exercise, sometimes even doubling my scores. I know you want to keep her out of this, but she's the best MPT engineer we've got. We need her expertise. And look, I will deny ever saying this under oath, I might add. Kathy is the most talented individual the WSA is working for them. Apart from you two. And me, of course. We're not seriously discussing this, are we? I mean, she... she has no prior experience. She's a complete risk to the mission. Sarah's right. Kathy shouldn't be part of the team. There are too many factors How involved. Hey, hey, Maria. Hey, come in, please. Seriously? 
Please, Claire, let me be a part of the mission. Were you eavesdropping? Yeah, and I'm sorry for that, but Claire, you know I've proven myself to the WSA. Two concurrent science degrees, majored in stream tech, top marks in the astronaut training program, like Ryan said. Thanks for the kind words, by the way, mate. Sure. And you need my MPT expertise. Please, Claire, with you by my side, I know I can do this. We can do this. Plus, there's only like, what, three other trained astronauts to choose from? So. <laughs> I think you should take her on the team, Claire. What? 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 Nice. She's one of the most qualified people we have at the WSA. However, the final say is yours, of course. Okay, Kathy. Even though look, Ryan's last argument was severely lacking, yeah. Ouch. I believe you'll do everything you can to guarantee the mission's success. Right, Kat? Of course. Now I would like to go over the minutia for the mission with Claire, Sarah, and Ryan. Can you let us handle this without listening in this time? Oh, well, seeing as I'm now. Kathy. Mm hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so did he hack Ayla? Are they not aware that the signal said Moonbear? I mean, Claire at least ought to know what Moonbear means. A few months later, 2069. Rolf didn't get any climbing picks. Or did he? <laughs> Maybe he did. <laughs> you all snug in there, Ayla? You need anything? Cup of coffee? Magazine? You diva. <laughs> Oh, that's where she got jabbed. <clears throat> by Isaac? I think by Isaac. You look nervous. It's not every day you get to go to space. No uses you? No, no. But seeing you, you're... Proud. <clears throat> hey. That scar on Sarah's stomach, is, is that the one Dad gave her? Yeah, why? Just curious. Knock, knock. You ready? Let's go. Yeah? <sighs> Just gonna get on a spaceship with your welding and cutting laser equipped. Good plan, good plan. Goodbye, blue and orange suit. Goodbye and good luck. Hmm. Uh, see you on the other side, Ayla, I guess. GC, we're heading to the rocket now. Copy that. Transport is ready for you. How's everyone feeling? Good. Slept like a baby. Of course you did. You didn't? Yeah. Sure. How about you two? Good. Yeah, fine. Good. You mean I'm not gonna have to just push all the buttons and levers for myself this time? And I'm not racing a dust storm? What a novel concept. Anyway, uh, it looks like we're all out of time for episode two. Come back and see me again in episode 3, and we 
are going to go to space. Talk to you soon.